Hello, welcome back. I'm looking at this CapEx data, same data from the previous video. In the previous video, we built this Lambda function called pivot every n rows, which takes the attribute and the value and it counts of attributes per uh, row ID and pivots it, transposes it into this format, which is a lot more useful than this. It's a really common problem. Uh, this approach, however, is somewhat complex. There is a much simpler way to do this, but I will show you how to do the simple way, and then I will explain why the simple way and the existing way that we created last time are not good enough. The simple way is to use wrap rows, and we pass it a vector, which is just this, and a wrap count, and that's just the number of attributes per unique row ID, so per CapEx project. There are 13 attributes, if you saw the last video, um, and that really is it to transpose the data. It keeps it in the right order, but it doesn't give us the headers. We can easily add the headers by using VStack and then uh, two row and unique and the attributes and VStack that on top of the wrap row solution. And that gives us the same solution. However, look what happens if I remove the approval status from this project. This is just falling apart very quickly. If there are the same number of attributes per pivoted row, then using wrap rows or using the Lambda we developed last time is totally fine and it will work. Of course, things are rarely that simple. So if you have an unequal number of attributes per entity, per project, then you'll need something a bit more complex. Let's take a look at how to deal with that now. Okay, I have created a new sheet, which is a copy of the first sheet, but I've removed various attributes from the CapEx projects, which in the previous video, there were 13 rows for each CapEx project. In this example, there are now not 13 rows. There are 13 or fewer rows for each project. You can see here that the pivot every n rows function call is not doing a very good job. You can see that the wrap rows version is also not doing a very good job. And I'm going to explain why, and then we're going to do something better. Uh, take a look at this formula. This is using the logic from the pivot every n rows lambda function to create the row IDs and column IDs that are needed to properly pivot the data and sort the column headers correctly. So first of all, the row ID is in column C. And in the previous video, we wanted to have 13 rows with one. 13 rows with two. Now this has not worked because there are no longer 78 rows, there are 72 rows. And second of all, there are an unequal number of attributes for each project. So while project uh, CapEx one has 13 rows and the one, 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 one aligns nicely with the blue cells. When we go to project two, where the vendor is missing, you can see it goes department budgeted amount where there should be a vendor row. If we put 13 twos next to that, it bleeds over into project three. Similarly, row ID three starts on department and bleeds over into the vendor of project four, and it's just a big mess. So we need to recreate these IDs, but we need to do them in a way that aligns with each project. I'm gonna get rid of these and get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. The first thing to note is that in the attribute column, there is a unique set of attributes. Each project has either all of those unique attributes or some of them. We can assign an integer to each value in the attribute column. And we can do that first by creating unique attributes, which is just unique attributes. And that looks like this. Now we want to assign an integer to each of those unique pieces of text, which is easy enough as well. So we can just say attribute IDs will be a sequence of the rows of unique attributes. Now we've got a column ID one through 13 for each of the unique attributes. But what we actually need to do is have a, an array that is as long as the attribute column and assign each of those integers to each of the rows in the blue cells, in the yellow cells, in the white cells, and so on. And we can do that with XLOOKUP. So let's say col ID is going to be X lookup, and we are looking up the values in from the attribute column in the list of unique attributes, and we want to return the attribute IDs. If we look at that now, you can see that it has properly assigned one through 13 for the blue cells, one through 13 for the yellow cells. Note that three is missing and one through 13 for CapEx project three. Note that 
uh, seven and eight are missing and so on. So this is now the column ID for the output. The next thing we need to do is create the row ID to make sure that it is properly creating six rows when we use pivot by. Now there are a few ways to do that. The way I'm gonna show you is a simple way and it makes an assumption of the data. And the assumption is that each project begins with the project code. If we create a variable called shift and we say attribute equals project code, since this is now true for each project code, we can use a rolling sum via the scan function to create the row ID that we need. So let's put row ID and use the scan function. We can skip the initial value. The array is the shift array. And the third argument, the function, we just want to sum. So this has correctly put one, 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 two, 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 and so on, all the way down to the sixes. It's got a true in the beginning because we didn't convert them to integers first. If we wrap this uh, expression in parentheses and put the double unary operator, which is two negative symbols, that will convert the true false values into one for true and zero for false. And then when we pass that array of ones and zeros into the scan, it will properly sum into the array that we need. So you can see that this is the shift array where it's one for project code and zero otherwise. And this is now the row ID, one, two, all the way down to six. The next thing to do is to create that pivoted row the same way we did last time. We use pivot by and the row ID is the first argument. The second argument, if we recall, is the H stacked column ID and attribute. And the third argument is the value, which is the column B. And then we are using the single function. If you don't understand why, please watch the previous video. And then we're putting zero there, zero there, skip and zero, the same as we did last time. Okay, we've got a good start, but it has of course got this unnecessary column and unnecessary row. So in order to fix that, we need to drop from pivoted the first row and the first column. That has now produced an output which looks pretty good. Where the attributes were deleted, we just have empty cells. Uh, let's turn this into a Lambda function. We'll use the imaginative name pivot every n rows two, and we'll put Lambda attribute and value and paste the let statement. And because the attribute and value are now arguments of the function, we can delete them from the let statement. The other thing we need to note is that uh, project code is a hard coded piece of text here. So we could add an argument for that and let's call it first attribute. So that when we need to use this for a different data set, we can just pass the name of the first attribute as an argument to the function. Okay, that's pivot every n rows two. Pivot every n rows two. And the attribute is uh, this, and the value is this, and the first attribute is project code. Let's check that it is the same as the function, uh, the same as the formula. They're all true, so it's the same. And to check it one more time, let's check that this new formula gives the same output as the old lambda function. Let's put the approval status back in here. Um, approval status, and this is approved. So let's use pivot every n rows two, and the attribute is this, and the value is that, and it's project code. And we want to check that the new formula produces the same result as the old formula. So this is old, and compare it to new. Check that they're all true, they are. So that's it, that's how you can create a Lambda function using pivot by, you can transpose stacked data where the entities in the stacked data have an unequal number of attributes. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, have a great day.